It's a must. You got to. going 12 okay good haul good haul for a day on the lake and these fish were all all hanging on a ledge on a steep drop off um, so look look for that structure along the bank it's going to tell you what's hiding below studying the shoreline will tell you what the lake is like down below i'm out here walking across this dam to get to our get to my fishing spot so we're, look, we're looking straight down the, the lakeside you can see how that tree line tapers off into the water that just tells you right there that there's a that was a that was a natural bluff coming down into the water. If I turn around, look at the back side of the dam, okay? Here's here's the back side of the dam right here. This is a hard slope right here. I can see that this is a whole ridge or a bluff through there. You know, from from high side up here tapering down, okay? So when I spin directly around before this dam was built, it probably continued on the same right here. So I know that down there in the lake, on this, this, this edge of the lake, there's a hard tapering bank, a drop off. Letting it fall, let it fall. Feels like we're getting about uh, 15 or eight, 15 foot of water out there. Which is plenty deep enough to catch winter crappie. There's one, it's got some weight. Definitely a keeper fish. Oh yeah. All right. So that's my second fish there. That's 10 inch fish all day folks right there. That's a keeper anywhere. Not a monster. We'll let her go. All right. We're making good, hard, solid casts. I'm throwing as hard as I can. Throw it out there, let it hit the water, let it sink. I'm counting to about 10. Okay. Just slowly turning the reel just to keep my slack in so I can feel the bite if I get a bite on that fall. There's a fish right on the fall. Ooh. Ooh. On the fall. That feels like a dandy. I've got two fish, folks. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that, son. Boys and girls, that's what's going on. Yeah. That's a hot bite right there. Winter time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, find them deep banks. The deep, sharp off, sharp drop off bank on a lake, it's gonna continue on out there into the water. That's the way it was, it was like that when the, the lake was built. It's still there. Double trouble right there. You're free. <laughs> yeah, you'd be a little discombobulated too. It's full spool, okay? Six pound high vis mono. Full spool. A full spool is absolute key for making long casts. If that spool was three quarters full, half full, we'd be getting 10, 12 feet less in distance. Throwing from the bank, trying to reach deep water, 
you have to come with a full spool. It's a must. You got to. Um, this bottom jig is a joker. It's a Mr. Crappie joker made by Strike King. White body, green tail. It's got three little tails. I have been hammering crappie on this all winter. Hammering them. And I think I got three left. So, gonna have to get some mo. Hot pink Bobby Garland on top, two inch, eighth ounce. 20 inches spread, okay? Going into the deep water, stone rocky drop off. Banging them. These fish here, I'm sure, are just associating with the um, with a, a creek channel drop off. That creek channel, the creek, the main creek that made this lake that they dammed up to make this lake, has to flow pretty close to this bank. This fish, because I know, on the other side of the lake, it's just a lot of mud flats that taper off into the water, real slow and easy, and it's mud bank. And uh, you can look out there in the water and see that it's just mud bottom. A lot of times rock like this in the water will give you a good indication whether you're fishing close to deep water or not. Another solid fish. It's 10 inches, no monster. It's got a nice thick back to him. Um, no belly, doesn't look like they're feeding real hard. He's got a little pooch there. That just might be a female with her, her eggs building up in there, but their lower belly. Not very full, but uh, pretty thick back there. Pretty healthy fish. Ooh, that guy was close to the bank now. He wasn't out there but about 20 foot. This, this must drop off. I need to slow down. This must drop off fast into the lake where we're at here. Here's an example of um, when you're studying a bank to find deep water by just judging the shoreline. Here's an example of where you wouldn't want to crop your fish in the winter. You see how we got a flat, flat bank line, flat field all the way up behind us. It just kind of gradually tapers off into the water. Yeah, no good. Um, that that flat, this flat ground is just going to continue off into the lake. Okay, that's how the lake was built, and that's the type of ground was here before they flooded it. So, gonna be a shallow mud flat out there. No crappie there in the winter. And it does, when I look down the water here, it does. Right by where that fish is at right now, it just choom, bottoms out into darkness. So I can see rock and stone under the water right here till about three or four foot out there and just phew, into darkness. Nice fish. Another big mouth crappie. Ain't no monster. He's not a monster, but he's going 12, okay? Beautiful. Even the crows think so. There you go, buddy. See you, man. Thanks for playing. Got him. Pretty close to the bank too. Pretty close. Woo! Tell you what, I know that wind's howling. You probably hear it in your ear. But it's just gonna make the fish bite even better. It's going to be harder for me to, to detect the bite. I'm going to have a lot of wind slack in my line. Um, but it's just going to make them bite even better. And you want to know the real kicker? It's a north wind, which usually indicates a cold front coming through or a change in the, the weather. And if you're there too late, when that starts happening, it can turn the fish bite off. But we're hammering them, hammering them in the north wind. Um, got some clouds coming in on the north horizon, but uh, sometimes being there right before it comes in, that's the time to be there. These guys go into a feeding frenzy. A few hours before a weather change or a lower high pressure system moves in, can thump them. And north winds usually indicate that. North, north wind, don't go forth. Winds out of the north, don't go forth. 
Not always. Not the day before, the day of it. Turn them up. Thumped it. Wow. This wind's kicking my butt, folks. It don't matter. Hopefully you can hear me. I don't know. This is going to be bad. But when I throw out there, I'm throwing as hard as I can. That line is drooping off about 40 feet now. Can't reel up the slack because you need to keep the jig out there in the deep water. You just got to watch that line. Watch for that line to move or pull or tighten up. You know you had a fish hit it. Your natural tendency, tendency is to cast. There he is. Oh, he was close. He was close to the bank. Get back out there. Throw it out there. I'll continue what I was saying here in a minute. I'm one of them guys that has a hard time doing two things at once, even if it is just talking. Okay. Um, your natural tendency is in the wind to cast out there. There's a bite. I felt it. Had 30 feet of slack in the line, but I still felt that bite. Okay? It can happen. It's a nice fish. This is a slabby here. Happy slab right here, folks. Oh, he's not too big. He's, he's going 11. Right at 11. One more and I'll finish what I was saying. How about that? Hee <laughs> hee. All right. Cast it out there hard as I can, far as I can. Got 600 feet of bow in my line. We're letting it fall. We're, your tendency is to reel up that slack. If you're bass fishing, if it's warmer water, yeah, you can reel up that slack and you're going to start cranking. This is, that's a big no-no in this situation. We're going to let that jig fall through that water column and get down to them deep cropping. There's a fish. Oh, this is a hog, boy. This is a hog. This, this cannot be a crappie. This cannot be a crappie, folks. This has got to be a 10-pound channel cat. Drum something. Folks, as if this is a crappie, we're going home. We're done. Oh, I snagged him. I plumb snagged him sideways. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, he gave me a he gave me a good time. Sorry, buddy. Right close to the gill. It's not in the gill, but oh man, I'm sorry, buddy. There we go. Giving him the shivers. Let's get him back in the water. Might take him a second. There he goes. Shoom. Back to the depths. All right. The Joker, boy. The wind's pick. I've been here for about an hour. You've seen what I've seen. The wind's starting to howl. It's going to make for terrible video. I don't have no wind socks or nothing for my cameras yet. I'm poor. Um... I'm going to turn this camera off and I'm going to do what I do and I'll check back with you here in a minute. I'd stay in a spot three foot around with two foot wave. Just all day long. Yeah. I'd probably do that more. Yeah. I drove up to a spot that's about this time. The older I get, the less I get in a boat. Yeah, this is what we ended up with today. That's what we're taking home. Um, fished all afternoon, tore them up. Probably caught, I don't know, caught 100 fish. I really don't know. Tore them up. Um, never got snagged, never found any brush. So all these fish were coming off that drop-off, um, whatever was under the water there. Um, some type of a, a rocky ledge, 
straight drop off, um, whatever. It was down there, and that's what's there. That's what followed the contour of the bank into the water. And uh, you got to be able to recognize those kind of things to be a good bank fisherman. If you want to be a good bank fisherman year round, um, in the winter time, um, lake level, river level, it's all key to catching fish. Um, you got to know what's down there below the water. And if you're not in a boat, you can't do that. Got to study the shoreline, figure them out. Spend time doing it. Um, pay attention to Mother Nature. Um, read the bank line. Read the shoreline. Read what's up above the lake because that folly follows off into the water. Yep. It's absolute key to the game. All right. Appreciate you guys coming along. And, uh, yeah, tickled to death. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave a comment, all that good stuff. All right. Geese are coming home. It's time for me to go home. We'll see you at the next spot. Later.